Good morning, Russellville, and welcome to the Russellville Community Church and our live video streaming. We hope in these times, these perilous times, that we are bringing you hope and peace, and that we're hoping that you will know after today's service that God is really alive and he does exist. Here are these opening words from Ministry Matters. Hope is not only a life and death matter, hope is a life and death matter. Hope finds its greatest challenge and shines its greatest light. When life stands in the face of death and affirms that God remains trustworthy, Ezekiel is called to prophecy such hope in the valley of the dry bones and lost streams. The psalmist proclaims hope from the depths as one who waits for the gift of a morning yet to dawn. And Jesus, stricken with grief, born of love, speaks hope into Lazarus' tomb, calling his friends forth as a sign of God's glory and of our hope. Hear this in our call to worship this morning. In silent sanctuaries, in our houses or apartments, Whenever we are in these moments of worship, early each morning, God waits to greet us with joy and wonder. We awake to find ourselves enveloped in grace. During these days of isolation and worry, in this time of uncertainty and feet, Jesus challenges us with the possibility of faith. Even in these times of safe distancing and caring for others, <clears throat> as well as ourselves, we can offer healing and hope to others. In the shadowed evenings when fear lurks outside and we long to hear the lullabies of grace, the Spirit is with us. The light of light shines on us. From early morning until we say our prayers, comforting us in the shadows of sleep. Let us celebrate that light that shines on us as we worship our God. Pastor Allen. And good morning from me. I would like to welcome today some visitors who have come to worship with us. This is a leader of visitors, and they have all come in. They, they are set six foot or more apart here in the sanctuary, and we have uh, some even up here close. And this is this is uh, Wiley Jones, and Wiley is the leader of the, the group that has come here. And over there, in Peyton Haley's place today, is uh, Missy Singh, and Missy is doing a good job of leading the worship today. I'll put Wiley over here. By the way, it was a surprise when you came in to see all these all these puppets. You know, the sanctuary is obviously there are thirty some puppets listening to our service today. So welcome, puppets, and thank you to whoever brought them in today. First of all, I want to let you know if you want to contact us, our email address here at uh, the church is now. I'll give you a chance to get your pencils out here. Rusco Church, that's R U S S C O C H U R C H, Rusco Church at gmail.com. Let me give you the first part of it again. Rusco Church, R U S S C O C H U R C H. Phone is 765 435 2623. Please leave messages. We are, we are getting in, we are getting our messages and we'll be getting back to you. My phone number is 765-721-2691. Don't hesitate to contact us. Any reason, it'd just be nice to talk to some people, right? Then that's your chance to do that. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to, to Mikey Simpson. Mike, Michael Simpson, Mikey Simpson. Happy birthday, Michael. Really appreciate it. And happy birthday to David Gusenbarg. David Gusenbart, if you're still with us, I don't think he's going back to Arizona, 
but happy birthday to David Lusenbach. This baby announcement. Baby's born this past week. Madison Luann Nichols was born March 23rd, 2020. Uh, weighed seven pounds. Weighs, well, weighed, probably weighs more now. Seven pounds and six ounces. The parents are Tyler and Mindy Nichols, and the grandparents are Jeff and Susan Nichols. And Lily Lou Phillips, born March 26, 2020. Weight, six pounds, 14 ounces, length, 19 inches. The parents are Brittany and Jared Phillips, and the grandparents are Cindy Lou and Kurt Reisman. Reisman. So congratulations, grandparents, and congratulations, parents and brothers and sisters for the new addition that, is, that has come your way. That's a blessing from God. We don't really have prayer concerns as such written here, but obviously we want to, we want to send out prayers to those who are living, those who are alone and may be frightened and scared and uh, don't don't hesitate to call someone if you need if you need groceries or you need something to get you through the time and don't forget prayer too because god will be there we do have one i've got two pastor two. Alan. Lori clark Ryder, who has been on our prayer list for quite some time uh deanna reached out and said she's needing prayers because she's in the hospital and also a dentist O'Hare was in ICU at Putnam County Hospital for pulmonary embolism and short of breath. So Dennis O'Hare, who is in the uh, emergency room at, at Putnam County Hospital, and also Lori Harper. Lori Harper, right? And Lori is. We need to put both of those people on our prayer list. Thank you, Rhonda. Appreciate that. Just a minute. Make sure we don't have another announcement. Okay. Don't have any anniversaries, but big announcements, and so we have we have uplifting news, and then we have news of prayers that we need to be sending out to Lori and Dennis. So let us pray. One thing we know, listening to our hearts. You are the one who journeys with us in these days of confusion and who waits for us at our final destination. One thing we know, healer of our lives, when we find ourselves in valleys veiled in shadows, you are walking alongside us, even though we may never notice. One thing we knew and one thing we know, comfort of our soul, comfort of our souls, when we are weakened by the burdens of our lives, when fears disrupt our lives, you come to us to rest your strength and peace upon us. And one thing we know, God in community, holy in one, once we could not see you in every moment, but now our eyes are opened wide. And so we pray together that prayer that you gave to your son, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. One other announcement. We will have, we will have Monday Thursday service live, and also Good Friday service live. And so you'll want to, you'll want to, not live, I'm sorry, it's not live. It will be recorded. So you will want to, uh, if you are interested, there will be a special Reader's Theater uh, production put on then, and you may want to, uh, we'll let you know and a little more about it next Sunday. Okay, it's time for our scriptures, and the first one is Ezekiel. 37, verses 1 to 14, the Valley of Dry Bones. Rhonda? We don't want you to get out of the habit of using those Bibles, so make sure you get those out, and we're going to be reading from, I'm going to be reading from Ezekiel 37, and Pastor Allen will read John 11. But here's these words. When we are not able to worship together as a body, 
you might feel like you are a part of the dead bones in the valley. As you listen to the words in the scripture this morning, you can have a hope that we are united in the Holy Spirit. God commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind and told him what to say. In the Hebrew language, the word ruach means wind, breath, or spirit. Jesus made use of this when he spoke to Nicodemus about the blowing of the wind and the new birth through the spirit in John chapter 3, verses 5 to 8. Just like God created Adam in two steps in Genesis 2, 7, at his creation, Adam was complete physically, but he had not life until the breath of God was breathed into him. When Ezekiel spoke the breath of God, <clears throat> or spoke the living word of God, the breath from God entered the dead bodies, and they lived and stood to their feet. With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible, from Matthew 19, 26. Now hear these words from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry, he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you my people will know that I am the Lord when I open up from you. I will put my spirit in you and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. Thank you, Robert. The text of our message today is John 11, verses 1 to 45. It has to do with the death and rising of Lazarus. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. 
When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you're going back. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to, to mourn them. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he, he who opened the eyes of the blind man and kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but, this, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did and believed in him. Well, good morning to any kids that are, are listening today. And uh, you have heard three or four stories in the past, past weeks, very important stories leading up to Easter. And I want you to realize that Easter is going to be different this year. There's probably not going to be an Easter egg hunt. We're not going to have any big Easter service here at church, probably. And the, so it's going to be different. But that doesn't mean that you still can't enjoy the time that you have. Yeah, at home during this break, we'll call it. First of all, e-learning. Work on it. Get it done each day that you, that's assigned to you. And then secondly, with your parents' permission, whoever's watching you, 
go out and play a little bit in your own yard. Have get get some fresh air out there. Right? That that's we all like to see kids playing outside. And I know you can't do some of the things you've done before, but at least get outside and enjoy the, the weather. I think the weather Tuesday is going to be kind of yucky, but Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I think going to be pretty good this next week. So we want to make sure you get out there. And by all means, obey your parents, whoever's watching you. This is a tough time. This is a tense time. And parents want to make sure that you are safe. So please, obey them. I have a joke today from Michaela. Here's Michaela's joke. Why don't you write with a broken pencil? Why don't you write with a broken pencil? Well, it would be pointless. <laughs> the puppets aren't saying the thing. I thought that was funny. Puppets. Thank you, Michaela. And if you want to have your riddle announced during the children's moment here, just send it right on in, and we'll see that we get it announced. And thank you, Michaela. Let, let me pray for you. O oh Lord, be with these children, our friends, the ones who come to church and the ones who are out in our community. Be with them and, and help guide them through this time. And let them know that you are there with them and you are there with their parents. Keep them safe and keep them healthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Come on up, Ron. Now we're going to have, this is going to be an interview. Lazarus. That's me. It's going to be interviewed by. Who are you? I'm just your interviewer. I'm well, sure it's sure somebody famous. Uh, no, not today. Not today. <laughs> okay. All right. This is Beryl Macy from WBTS. And she's going to be interviewing me today. Seriously, this is a reader's theater. And uh, listen to this, this interview. I think that this is a very interesting way, I think, of presenting this. I did not write this. I did not find the source, so I apologize for that, but I'm going to be interviewed by Burl Winston. Today we have a very special guest. This guest has experienced what very few people have ever experienced. He was resurrected from the dead. I would like to introduce Lazarus, the beloved friend of Jesus. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm really glad to be able to share my experience with all of you today. First of all, if I may, let me say that I was brought back from the dead, not resurrected. Though many people think that these two experiences are the same. I didn't realize there was a difference. Oh, yes. You see, I was actually resuscitated and raised from the dead. I was the same as before I died. A person who experiences resurrection, on the other hand, no longer has the human limitations that they had before they died. Someone who is resurrected will never experience death again. I, on the other hand, will die again. Well, thank you for clarifying those terms. Now, tell us about your relationship with Jesus. Jesus was a very good friend of our family, my two sisters, Martha and Mary and I. I would say he was my best friend. He had stayed with us many times as he traveled to and from Jerusalem. We considered him part of our family. Is that why your sister sent a message to him asking him to come because you were ill? My sisters needed Jesus to be with them, particularly because they had, been, they had seen him heal others. They hoped he could heal me. Also, he loved me as if I was his brother, so they knew he would want to be there. You were very ill. Yes, so ill that before Jesus arrived, I died. That brings up a point. Why did Jesus wait two days before coming to be with you? To be honest? I think he wanted to wait until I died because then he could actually bring me back from the dead and convince people that he is truly the Messiah. When he got there, I had been dead for four days. That's one day past the time that the Jewish people believed that a person's spirit had entered his soul. I guess you might say he made sure that there was no question that I was dead, both physically and spiritually. He also might have wanted some more time to prepare himself spiritually for his trip into Jerusalem. It's going to be a hard journey for you, I'm afraid. My sisters didn't understand that at first. Is that why Martha ran out to me? Oh, that Martha. She's the outspoken one. I don't know for sure, but I think she probably wanted to let you know how disappointed she was that he had not come sooner. What about your sister Mary? Oh, uh, she's a little more reserved. But she was also upset that Jesus hadn't gotten there sooner. But after what he did for me, they quickly forgot their frustration. In fact, their faith in Jesus became even greater. 
Why were so many people there? You had already died, had been placed in a tomb. It's a Jewish custom for families and family and friends to stay with the deceased family for several days after the death. It meant a lot when I stepped out of the tomb and finally got unwrapped from the burial cloths. To see, yes, it was, they were tight. To see all those friends standing there. But my biggest thrill was seeing Jesus standing there with tears in his eyes and holding his arms out to me. Let's talk about those tears. Why do you think he was crying? Well, you know, when you're in the presence of death and all the mourning, it's not easy to keep from feeling the sadness that's all around you. He also saw Mary's tears, and he could no longer hold back his grief in losing a friend. He could have been sad to see that the death still had such a hold on people, so much so that it affected their faith. You know, come to think of it, I think that was the first time I'd ever seen him cry. Yes, I believe it was. In your own words, tell us who Jesus is. I believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. That was the very same statement that your sister made to Jesus. I know. I think she's the first follower of Jesus to make that statement. Even without knowing that she said the same thing, I would still tell you that Jesus is the Messiah. We heard that not everyone who was there when Jesus performed the miracle was excited to see you come forth from the tomb. Well, some of the people there went to tell the Pharisees about what had happened. Why did they do that? Well, the Pharisees had been really upset with Jesus because of the healings and miracles he's performed. Also, some of them consider his teachings as blasphemy. I'm afraid of what they will do to him if they ever are able to capture him. Lazarus, did you realize that the temple officials, officials have issued a death warrant for you? Yes, I heard that they want me, want me dead so that they can say that Jesus never performed the miracle. Are you afraid? You know, I consider myself very fortunate to have the opportunity to see another day. Each day is precious to me now. I don't want to waste any of it by worrying about dying. I'm going to tell my story to anyone who will listen. Besides, I believe in Jesus, so I know that I will somehow live even though I will have died. Now, may I ask you a question? Certainly. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who is sent into this world? Yes, I very much so do. And let me ask those of you listening to our conversation, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who was sent into this world? Yes. 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 Amen. Thank you for speaking to us. Well, thank you for welcoming me here to share my story. Thank you. The scripture tells us, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps a fruit or some other grain. But God gives it a body as God has chosen. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in a physical body. It is raised in a spiritual body. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. We said that we believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and that those who believe in him, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in him will never die. But yet, a lot of us are afraid of dying. For some, it's a worry that follows them throughout their lives. It's easy to say that we shouldn't worry about the future, but how many of us still do? Bill Keene tells us how we should show out our gratitude for each day and enjoy it without worrying about what is to come. Bill Keene said, yesterday's the past, tomorrow's the future, today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. And so we need to appreciate this present, just as we appreciate other presents that we're given. And we need to start each day by rejoicing and being glad. And then see each gift as a gift, or each day as a gift or a present from God, and use it to its fullest. Help other people along the way. Show love for family, friends, and strangers. 
Thank God for the privilege of seeing this day and notice the miracles of life that surround us. This is kind of a summary of what I have been preaching the last, last month concerning what, how we need to appreciate it each day. Add this, way of, add this way of living each day to what we believe concerning eternal life, and we will see our faith strengthen, strengthen more and more. In closing, Jonathan Swift tells us the following blessing. May you live all the days of your life. May you live all the days of your life. Amen. I thank you for joining us this morning. We have one more announcement. Abby White's birthday is next Saturday. Abby White's birthday is next Saturday. And by the way, Abby, there is someone out there that is taking your seat, and right next to them is somebody taking your brother's seat. So they're having, they're having fun here. And I'm looking forward to the time when you can all come back and we can all have fun here. Happy birthday, Eddie. If you were here, the dog would be singing. And we are singing to you with our hearts, Abby. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, keep in our minds the life of Lazarus, the death of Lazarus, and the resuscitating of Lazarus. But more than that, keep in our hearts during this time Jesus and Jesus' love for Lazarus as well as his love for us. A love that brought Jesus to Lazarus' side. A love that caused Jesus to even weep. The one time we know that Jesus wept. Oh Lord, continue to be with this church and to be with this congregation as we carry out your will in these days of uncertainty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh,